So we're going to start our amalgam by placing the amalgam with the melvin carrier. I used a small carrier to the first pulpo uh, floor or to the corners. I usually use the big carrier just for the crucial part. I'm going to be using my, in this case, my medium condenser and start condensing uh, quick the occlusal surface, making sure that I'm getting the bottom of the amalgam well adapted to the cavity prepared. And then I'm going to be placing a little bit more amalgam. Uh, remember, amalgam have to be overfilled always and because we're going to be condensing so and also you know every time you condense um, you're releasing some of the mercury on top and that mercury needs to be removed when you're carved so you want to make sure that you have a lot of amalgam in there to cover all the cable surface margin as well so i'm using now basically my uh, condenser in a way they are just following the anatomy of the triangular reaches just to basically remove some of the gross excess. So this actually is going to give me also my first anatomy and again you go and slide the instrument against the cable surface margin so you make sure that your cable surface margin is uh, flush with the, uh, for the cavity preparation and I go again and over and you see how I'm basically changing the angle of the instruments according to the to the triangular ridges. I think this is a very important uh, step. The, some people do it with a, a burnisher as well. This is called the pre-burnisher. I'm using here the ball burnisher and what I'm doing is going over the cable surface margin just to make sure it is flush and uh, also to make sure that I can remove some of the excess. And going over, I usually go over uh, twice and I only go over the cable surface margin. If you notice, I don't touch uh, the close up table. Now I'm going with the Holland bag and I just want to make some landmarks in here. The best landmarks that you can do are your central, um, I'm sorry, your buccal and lingual group. You never do the central group. The central group will come out when you're, car when you're carving the triangular ridges. So what I'm doing here is just removing a little bit of excess and you see how my instrument is go at the same angle of the triangular ridges and I'm just creating some of the landmarks, in this case the lingual groove and then I move to the buccal groove you remember and this is a first mandibular molar so it has two buccal groups the mesial buccal group and the distal buccal group and I go over that with the Holland back because uh, um, I think it's, um, it's a good instrument to create that first anatomy after I create this first anatomy and trying to remove some of the excess on the grooves, I'm going to be switching to another instrument. Now I'm going to go and put a little bit of water in there just to remove a little bit of the excess and to clean up and to see a better, uh, usually you can see better what you have. Now I'm using my clear discoid, in this case I'm using the cleoid is the pointy part used to create the fossa and the pit okay remember this is a triangular fossa so that's why I'm using the Clio I create the mesial the distal uh, with a pointy part and then what I'm gonna do is gonna switch to the round part because I want to do it smooth remember in dentistry we don't have one anything sharp everything should be smooth and round so that's what I'm doing with this one and then you're going to use my Clio discoid for uh, starting to create the anatomy there. So what I'm doing right now, I just lay my instrument against the triangular ridges and I'm just removing and carving that amalgam away. Make sure that you're now scratching the 
and trying to do the central groups or any groups. By carving the triangular ridge, it will give you the anatomy. It's the same principle from waxing with a uh, dental anatomy. So I'm just, as you can see, I'm moving my instrument and go the same direction of the of the triangular ridges and I'm trying to do all of the vocal, lingual and I'm trying to do cost by cost. I think it's easier when you're trying to do one cost by the time um, and I go and over the, 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 the anatomy of the tooth and uh, I'm going to go and clean it up a little bit more on the distal and again it should be carved only the triangular ridges as you can see uh, after you go with the first round of carving and uh, you remove some of the excess you start looking at some anatomy in there um, I'm using here the holland bag just to go a little bit and make this a little bit more uh, or define better the the groups um, make sure that you always use your landmarks on the buccal and lingual group that's gonna be the best landmarks that you have every time you carve an amalgam okay uh, as you can see we're not carving a central group we're not carving a central group we're just doing our um, triangular ridges and uh, you can see the amalgam start getting set you can see a little bit more shiny every time we carve and that's a sign that the um, amalgam is starting to get set um, another important point is that you always have to make sure that your cable surface margin is all clean and you don't have any submargination at this point you cannot add any more amalgam um, it's just basically it's a carving I'm cleaning up a little bit more because this with this micro brush it will smooth a little bit the surface for me and I go with the with the um, hauling back and uh, again carving just the triangular ridge and that uh, is creating and uh, start creating my uh, amount my uh, anatomy on the on the occlusal table as you can see just by carving those triangular ridges giving me the central group I'll do the same thing with the lingual cusps cleaning up a little bit more and, uh, and also dry this and uh, basically is most of the anatomy is already is already there if you want to just uh, go and carve a little bit more just to define the anatomy and this is the moment because you can see how the amalgam is set now and uh, so the amalgam is set now basically um, at this point you can only define the anatomy you cannot carve much unless uh, you, you're missing something but other than that anatomy is pretty much done and uh, the next step for this one will be you can go with the burnisher and just polish a little bit more I'm not gonna do that right now it's just because I want to show you just uh, what you can get from carving um, remember amalgam has to be polished after 24 hours because one of their uh, it takes 24 hours to get all the comprehensive uh, strength so um, at this point I'm just gonna clean it up make sure it is wipe down with a two by two and this is pretty much your final product okay.